If you've been frustrated by Codex CLI's messy output or missing features, that just changed. Codex has been dropping releases almost every day for the last few days, and they've got some huge updates, cleaner output, custom prompts, and even a full IDE integration. Today, I'm gonna to talk about some of the biggest usability updates to Codex. First off, readability. One of the problems I had in the past was this just dump of information as it was working. There was no summarization at the end, or I should say very little summarization at the end, and I had to just wade through pages of output to see what it was doing. Contrast that with this. It now runs a checklist as it's working and does not display every single thing it's thinking. You can see here in the end, it's got a plan and it goes through and checks off the steps as they are happening. Then it gives you this really nice summarization at the end, what it built in a concise, readable format. It gives you a list of the files that it implemented and tells you how the project works. Then it gives you any other information you need, how to run it, and how, in my case, how it fit with the PRD that I gave it in order to start the project. When I did have problems, the back and forth felt much more natural. I maybe cut and pasted in an image of the error messages that I was getting, and it gave me just a simple little message back. Got it, page not found due to an embedded URL format. I updated a couple things and here's the changes I made. What to do now and notes. Instead of, again, pages and pages of output that I had to wade through trying to find the difference between what it was thinking about doing and what it had actually done. A couple of other just usability changes. They've added a slash status command. This sort of gives you a broad overview of the project that you're working on, the workspace that you're in, the account that you're on, the model that you're running, and what reasoning effort it's using, as well as your token usage if you're tracking that. The next thing that I really found myself missing in Codex was custom slash commands. In Claude Code, you can create your own custom slash commands to run prompts that you find yourself using over and over again. Good news, Codex just dropped custom prompts. You can now put your own custom prompt markdown files in your user directory under the .codex slash prompts directory. So now you can run your own prompts. You might need something like a fun fact. This is just a prompt I set up in a file. If a topic is provided, give me one fun, surprising, or quirky fact about that topic. If no topic is provided, give me a random fun fact about the world. Here we go. Honey found in 3000 year old Egyptian tombs is still edible because honey's low moisture and acidity naturally prevent spoilage. That's great. So that honey that I've had in the back of the pantry for like two years, totally fine. So over here, I am in my .codex slash prompts directory, and I've added just a couple of custom prompts. So obviously you would probably wanna use this for something a little bit more practical than finding out fun world facts. I mean, maybe not, but since this is at the user level, this is a great place to put anything that you're constantly typing in across your projects. So for example, I've created a run tests prompt. And uh, just as a side note, I am using Warp um, on the advice of a couple of comments in some of my previous videos, and it is amazing. The ability to not only open files inside my terminal window, and then the fact that the Warp terminal itself is using AI. So if I'm trying to maybe install something and maybe a package is missing, I can just say, can you install that package? I don't have to go look up, do I need Python? Do I need Python 3? It just takes care of it. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Anyway, back to my prompt. The other one I created was the commit prompt. So I can just have it commit the code to get, if there's not a repository, create one and commit the code. It will already do that if I say something like, can you make sure everything is checked in or check in the code? But just to be able to hit slash commit is just much shorter. And I know that it's gonna be the same thing across all of my projects. This is just a fantastic upgrade. And I am really happy to see that Codex has implemented this. The other thing that I'm really happy to see is that it's listing your prompts when you hit slash. As long as you just keep scrolling down long enough, you'll find the prompts that you've put in there. If your prompt doesn't show up in this list, it's probably because you've added that file since you opened this session of Codex. Just exit out of Codex and log back in and it should pick it up. But even if it doesn't show it in the list, you should still be able to run it. 
because it just goes and checks the prompts directory and finds the prompt that you put in there and runs it. One other very small upgrade they've added, it's actually really nice, is if you are in the middle of running something, let's say it's coding or it's running a prompt for you and it's busy working on that, you can go ahead and queue up another request. They didn't have this ability before. And although it seems minor, it's actually really nice. I could run the run test command and then I could queue up the commit command. I can walk away and get a cup of coffee and it's just gonna keep running for me. This one is small, but a really welcome change. The next really exciting update that they've added is an IDE extension. This actually dropped in the middle of my research for this video. I was getting caught up on all the new Codex CLI upgrades and I just stumbled across this. They have added extensions for Visual Studio Code, Cursor, and Windsurf. So this is pretty exciting. I do use Cursor, so of course I had to go install it immediately. And then once it's installed, you will have the little OpenAI logo. And as soon as you click that, it opens up your panel directly to Codex. So here's where it starts to diverge just a little bit from Codex CLI. They have done a couple of really nice things in here. So right in here, you are working with Codex directly. It's not command line interface, it's sort of this panel interface. They've given us drop down menus so we can either run in agent mode, which is what we are used to running in with Codex CLI, where you're just interacting directly with the coding agent, but you can also switch it to chat mode. So this would be similar to running Claude code in planning mode. So you can just ask it questions, maybe about your project or anything in general really, and it will answer you without just running off and coding. That was one of my other problems with Codex CLI was is, uh, I, I would be trying to plan out the project and say, you know, gosh, I'm thinking about doing this, I'm not sure and it would just go off and start implementing things. I really needed that, that buffered layer of interface to kind of uh, think about what I was doing and, and maybe set up an initial plan. I, I probably should be doing this with documents, frankly, with um, you know planning documents and requirement documents, but most of the time I'm coming in here just to build a play app. And so I'm really sort of bouncing ideas freeform. And so this is really nice that I can just put it into chat mode and just start asking questions about things. And then I can drop back down to agent or agent full access and have it just go to work again. The other thing that they've given us is the reasoning effort. So we can just change that reasoning effort right here in the interface. There's no command line options to remember and you always know what mode you're running it in because it's right here. All right, so the flip side of this, they have made a lot of really nice user interface changes, but what we've lost is the visibility into slash commands. You can still use them, you just don't get that nice drop down list of what they are it's still available because you can still run it, but it just doesn't show you what your options are. Now, as fast as they've been giving us updates, I would not be surprised if by the time you're watching this video, they've already fixed that, but I am super happy that now we have the option of using either or really both. So this one to me is just a fantastic upgrade. So given these changes, I am finding Codex 10 times easier to use at least. It's much more comfortable and uh, functional and actually much more informative to me as well. So all in all, I am really happy with these upgrades. So I am definitely going to be running some more comparisons in the future so I can really start getting my hands around which one is better for what purpose. I have a feeling like most things, as long as they are strong enough, they probably both have their strengths and weaknesses, and it's kind of fun to play around with them and just see what does what better. So if you're interested in those kinds of things, hit the subscribe button to be notified of any future side-by-side -side comparisons that I do. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button. It really does help the channel. It's really very much appreciated. All right, that's it for today. I hope you found that helpful. Go out, install the latest Codex CLI or IDE integration, and go play. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.